Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. So with each major patch release, CIG compiled the thoughts from each senior developer, hearing what they felt went well, what didn't go so well, plus give us a little insight into what's to come. So today we're going to take a look at that, and I've picked out some interesting points. As always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons and channel members for all of your support. If you do enjoy my content and would like to support the channel even further, it is all very much appreciated. All the links are in the description below. So before I begin, I have finally managed to pick up a Mercury Star Runner to give away. This is to celebrate reaching 30,000 subs here on YouTube and to say thank you to you all for getting me there. So the Star Runner is a standalone ship which has 120 months insurance and the Aero View Hangar. All you have to do is be subscribed and between today being the 25th of November through till the 9th of December is like my videos plus comment below on any of the videos between those dates and I will pick out a winner at random and announce it on the 9th of December. Thank you again to everyone who has helped me reach this crazy number. It has been quite a journey. So although the post-mortem goes through everything that was implemented within a particular patch, I will only touch on information that highlights the future work and what is planned, as many of us have been following along on the roadmap for months now and are actually playing the 3.11 build. So I'm not going to break down all the features that are in 3.11, just highlight anything of interest that was mentioned. Kicking off with the vehicle team, they spoke a little bit in regards to the missile and countermeasures updates. Firstly, they are aiming to properly tackle the missile and countermeasures with the upcoming missile operator mode, which will come sometime next year. But what we are seeing by way of improvements to the missiles and countermeasures in 3.11 and 3.12 includes some fixes and iterations to provide more of a taste of what the missile operator mode will deliver. Now, some of the improvements that we saw for countermeasures where flares will act on all missile types and chaff was turned into a noise field dampening all signatures within that field. Now alongside these countermeasure changes they updated the HUD with the countermeasure widget and added a keybind to allow direct launching of each countermeasure type and will eventually rename them to be more unique to Star Citizen. So instead of it being chaff and flare which we find in pretty much every other flying game it'll be something like noise fields and decoys. Now there was quite a lot of restrictions added to missiles like only being allowed to lock four missiles at a time, only launching one missile per rack, only able to launch one missile of one type be that IR, EM or CS. Missiles lose lock outside of their locking angle and they have introduced a minimum and maximum missile lock range. This was to reduce the missile spamming and stretch the missile gameplay out of the gun range allowing for missile focused ships to sit on the edge of combat while fighters get up close and personal. Now I really do like the changes that they have made to missiles. They feel a lot more viable and actually like you're firing something noteworthy. While defending against them is not just a balls to the walls panic trying to evade them. So CIG does want to make missile gameplay deeper and more rewarding and ensure that it has its place in the combat environment. They want the launching of a missile to be a conscious decision with consequences plus give the missile boats an edge when it comes to employing ordnance. They said they will continue to iterate on this in the next couple of patches and we will see the operator missile mode eventually come in. So on to tech, something quite interesting which was delivered in 3.11 was the canvas decal system. Now this creates textures at runtime and can be used for signposting, clothing or signage on vehicles. And the advantage of this being at runtime is that it can use game data like players' names and even have content translated to the language the game is being played in. So I really hope that this means we'll be able to get the names that we choose for our ships actually displayed on the sides of our ships, maybe even on our clothing, I wonder if that's going to be possible. Either way, it is a great step and I look forward to seeing what is actually possible with this new tech. The UI team worked on a system called the Canvas Slicer, which means they'll be able to produce interesting layered UI, such as holographic ship HUDs and helmet displays. The audio team spent a lot of time improving the overall experience to allow players to hear more of what's going on in the game and improved weapon firing support for long distances, as well as several issues with audio fire rates and weapon volumes. The engine team did a hell of a lot of work to improve memory usage and optimizations. A lot of the focus was on the Gen 12 renderer. However, a very large bug was fixed, which would cause all objects on clients to unload way earlier than intended and should now stay for longer distances. 
So the Planet Tech team, they continued to research and develop the Atmosphere and Cloud Renderer. They say they will go into more detail once the system becomes available, but they are working on a lot of stuff to create dense atmospheres in a performance friendly way, saying that they are now in the very early days of volumetric cloud rendering R&D. Let us hope that we get to see clouds and more interesting weather types planet side soon. I feel this will drastically change how the game feels and of course make it far more visually appealing. Plus introduce some mission elements like the need to approach a location on foot or by ground vehicle as maybe flight is too dangerous. Really excited to see weather come along. They've actually done a ton of work as well to improve the planet atmosphere lighting, which sounds like it'll pretty much improve everything from colour rendering at twilight, direct and indirect lighting, sun radiance, and adding ozone layers to Earth-like planets that emphasises the blueness of the sky. For core gameplay, we saw the introduction of the external inventory system, which will expand with the help of iCache, allowing players to store items in compartments, crates, and other external inventories. In the near term, they do plan to update the images of our external inventory system to more accurate representations of the actual item and not these current sort of blue shaded models. So throwing version 1 was a much needed improvement to the system and now we are able to not only throw grenades but all inanimate objects each with its own unique weight and mass applied. Now something in the post-mortem which I was extremely happy to read was in regards to the AR or the augmented reality throwing arc which I always felt broke the immersion and removed that skill factor. Basically, they mentioned in this post that although the throwing arc is enabled for all helmets right now, it will eventually only be accessible from combat specific helmets once they start defining different armor archetypes. Now, I was very happy to hear this. I'm glad that they are tying it into combat specific armors as it will be something you can choose and it will make sense to the loadout and roll depending on what you're doing. For weapons, the BR2 shotgun is to be the weapon that CIG push the range out for shotguns providing a bit more oomph in mid-quarter combat without it dominating at close quarters. Now they say they're not yet happy with shotguns at the moment, so they will be doing an update to all the shotguns in an upcoming patch to give them greater identity. The bearing grenade launcher on the other hand provided entirely different problems. They said a 40mm grenade in real life has a kill radius of about 5 meters with a casualty radius of about 15 meters, which CIG said is too big with the interior spaces right now and how you can fire many rounds over a short space of time. Now they have made the numbers slightly less than the normal frag grenade, but they feel like it is still a little too overpowered. This is mostly due to players having access to infinite ammo, which will drastically change when physical inventory comes in. Also, physical damage will be a big factor into using the grenade launcher as weapons, armor, and all items will lose integrity and value if damaged. So people may be less inclined to use the grenade launcher if they are planning to loot their victims. Now, I personally think the grenade launcher is going to be a very useful weapon and firing it inside a ship, for example, will likely be a very bad choice when this physical damage system and the room system evolves as you could vent a corridor or destroy power nodes and components and so on. So as much as it is very OP right now, it'll require a little bit more consideration in the future, especially when these physical inventories make it in, as they say. So for environments, for the cargo deck exteriors, they said they introduced new add-on components that describe the infrastructure and the large racks of containers, implying the capacity of a location which are purely visual right now, but they said in the future they will include more interactive elements. Now they didn't specify exactly what these elements would be but we know they are working on missions that you can obtain from cargo decks that would require you to maybe do a spacewalk and repair parts of the station for example. I guess the level of capacity of these containers will eventually be accurately represented by the actual cargo deck capacity at any given time which should be quite interesting especially when the dynamic economy comes in. Now they did mention that there is a disconnect between the cargo deck interior and exterior and they do plan to make the transit network physicalized to give more context to the player saying that this will provide visibility out of the transit cab to the exterior of the station as it moves towards its destinations. Now I completely forgot that they will eventually marry up the exteriors and the interiors of space stations to make sense when that comes, I don't know, maybe they're just wanting to flesh out things like cargo and refinery decks first before they actually try to marry them up, but I'm very much looking forward to that update. 
So for locations in the Stanton system, there was a lot of quality improvements like updating all the planets and moons with the latest tools and tech being used to build out the pyro system, as well as improving the geology packs. But some of the global painting passes they said were not as detailed and involved as they would like. So it's an ongoing process and they will continue to improve them. 311 brought the initial removal of armistice zones around space station exteriors and they said when they have the capacity to properly defend and police these various areas they will remove armistice zones from planet locations and landing zones. They are well underway with this spawn closet system which will allow them to spawn guards in areas planet side or even inside space stations to police them as well as working on a security network that will know when players have the right to be in a certain area and enable cameras, turrets and guards to respond to trespassers, those with crime stats or those in the process of committing crimes. They also mentioned that thanks to all the videos the devs have seen of players overrunning and holding rest stops, they will introduce the Idris to act as a top level response vehicle in 312. So thank you for all those who have been taking on the UEE. I cannot wait to go up against the Idris. It will be quite fun when we have full NPC police and security forces taking on aggressors. Removing those green zones will open up loads more gameplay potential as well for bounty hunting, assassinations and just plain old fun. So I'm very excited for when that happens. But those are the more interesting aspects of this 311 post-mortem. I do highly suggest reading this post, especially if you want to know exactly what was introduced into 311. But as I said earlier, I didn't want to go through it all because we have gone through these updates multiple times and we kind of know what is in 311, but there was some interesting bits to take out from it. Anyway, with that said, make sure you hit subscribe if you want to be in with a chance to win this Star Runner and just comment below with whatever you want to say. Be sure to come and hang out with us over on twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. If you want to be notified every time my videos go live, be sure to tick that notification bell. A big thank you again to my patrons and channel members for all of your support. Cannot do this without you guys, so thank you so much. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.